1080p should be good enough for lunch, I think. I'm playing around with the settings on this thing, so. food on my face already. It's saturated. So, how's your day? It's good to see you. yesterday because I slept. I kept thinking of different versions of different things to talk about here, but I really disliked anything I came up with. And it rapidly spiraled into a pretty acute sense of not wanting to make this, but I want to do this every day, you know, hell or high water, just to get used to it, so, skip this one, if, if you want, I probably will. I am in the mood to share a meal with someone though, so it's kind of nice for you to be here. I'm more like to just hear you talk about yourself as if that were possible. So <laughs> I don't know, somehow that factors into the things I end up talking about or thinking about. I might come up with something interesting to say after all. You never know. I might not. But Oh, that's hot. Do you like wasabi? I do. It's pretty much the best. I guess I'll confess something to you. Did you ever see um, a cartoon? What was her name? A woman, a young woman named Natasha, I think. I was going to say Natasha Allegri, but it's not Natasha Allegri. She's an, the person is an animator. And um, it's a cartoon called Bee and Puppy Cat. It's on the Frederator channel. You should check it out. It's a little indie thing. Um, the main character and uh, her sidekick watch a TV show. She's like a lonely person, you know. And uh, her favorite show is uh, just this guy eating lunch talking to her or to the camera you know and uh it's called the pretty pretty patrick show and it's not like a main part of the the story it's like this little side gag i really like the show but when i would see that little bit i remember thinking to myself this came out a couple years ago where did you come up with that? And here we are. <laughs> I didn't get it, you know. 
And now I get it. It's funny to me. I totally get it. You should check check her out though. It's a a really wonderful cartoon. <sighs> the same studio that did um, oh, the show with Catbug on it and um, I forget it you probably know what I'm talking about Bravest Warriors I like stuff like that um, every now and then that surprises people you know that I like cartoons or kids cartoons some up sometimes I look up um, kids songs songs that are typically performed for the sake of like toddlers you know because I remember them sometimes they'll pop into my head you know like for a Jaco or um, Oh, uh, what's the other one? The French um, goose plucking song. You know, I like that song. It gets, you know, in. Um, I can't add it to playlists. Here we are on YouTube, right? I'm gonna make um, music playlists, and it won't allow me to because it's children's content, and for some reason I'm not. I can watch it, but like I'm not allowed to like it or add it to a playlist or I don't know. Somehow my access to that has changed or differs. Deemed potentially inappropriate. I, I have to guess. Really, I have no idea why, but I don't know. It doesn't bother me. I still have access to the song, but like... It took me a while to realize that, even. There's this one version. Actually, I discovered, by like, going down like a YouTube wormhole, I discovered some kids' songs in other languages. I was, I was looking that up. I thought that would like be a good way to learn, you know, French or something. It's like to start out singing the songs that the kids who are learning the language sing. That way you learn about the culture too, and like the attitudes of the, the place. I think that's pretty smart. My point is I found some interesting songs that were catchy too. But I can't remember what they were because I don't remember the words well enough. I couldn't add them to a playlist. I would have had to like write them down or something like that. <clears throat> it blew, really blew my mind when I found out how um, significant uh, a portion of the user, user base was for like small children, you know. There's the whole PewDiePie and Coco Melon thing. Like that that's when it really hit home. I could not believe that. And then it made sense to me. It made perfect sense. But I've been removed from the world of the nursery, I guess, for as long as I've been YouTubing or whatever. So I, I don't know. I just can't imagine kids with phones and pads. I can't. I'm not passing a, a judgment or whatever, but I just... For once, it's like a scene that I'm on the outside of, you know? I don't know anything about. Whatever. This is what you're signing on for. I don't have anything to talk about. 
but I did buy two sushi boxes. That's the exciting thing today. So, what have you been doing? What have you been working on? Do you like sushi? Did I already ask you that? I don't even remember. I just finished Ozark. It was so good. I thought it would be good, but it was far better than that, than what I expected. Did you see it? <laughs> I kind of want to talk about the show, but maybe that would just be a a little bit too ridiculous. That would push this conversation, this lunch date, too far into the realm of the hypothetical or imaginary or fantastic, which is acceptable, but that's not really my thing. It's not what I'm going for. Mm. You more soy sauce. <clears throat> so where's today? I think it's the third. The Thursday, the third. Some life stuff. I feel like I could use someone to talk to about, but since I've started these again, I feel like I don't know you well enough. <clears throat> forgive me, forgive me for that, but. Sushi is what matters. Staying fed is what matters. Being a good cheer and in good health. I just don't want to go outside. I even dislike going to the store a little bit. I'm in this place where I just want to put a blanket over my head. Comfortably, you know. I'm just not. Come out again. That's what the last month has been like. That was May for me. 
I thought I needed it. I thought it would like rest me. I thought I would get something out of behaving like that. But I don't think it hurt me. just kind of built this momentum of not wanting to move. I, I don't think it'll change, you know, it's not like <clears throat> resting is not what's going on here. I feel like I've lost my taste for small talk again. I don't consider this small talk. Even though I guess that's exactly what it is. It's not like I don't want to move on with life or find something new or explore or it's not like I don't want to prosper, of course I do. That remains the point. Like, I can't explain it to you without being more open than I feel comfortable being. So that's what this is about. I guess that's what I'm really saying is that I realized that I'm going to have to challenge myself to be more candid if I'm going to move forward with my life or succeed or whatever you want to call it. I'm going to even dare to have goals. Um, and so the, this process is part of me um, pushing the limits of my own capacity for candor. You know. and just because I feel like I'm struggling a little bit, that's fine. This is just lunch, you know, it's just sushi. You don't have to make a statement here. This is just the Pretty Pretty Patrick show. Seriously, you gotta check out B and Puppy Cat. You'll 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 get it. It's hilarious. <clears throat> I like cartoon girls. I always like girls who drew. Particularly cartoons. They're like less pretentious than fine art girls. You know? Maybe you do, maybe you don't. Maybe you agree, maybe you don't. Whatever. 
I, I, I've seen what I've seen, and you've seen what you've seen. <laughs> it's not something to argue about. But I, I liked female cartoonists. They're always very charming. They're always very magical creatures. There's some on YouTube, actually. That's funny. <clears throat> I don't watch them very often. Hmm. I don't remember why. I think because it makes me feel lonely. And that is... That's pretty embarrassing to admit, but yeah. Sometimes when I see someone that I like, or how would you even describe that with someone who does art? When you feel the presence of um, someone that you like, via whatever medium it is, even if the medium is reality itself, and they're right in front of you. But they're very far away. I don't know about you, but... That's always made me very lonely. Very privately. Unusually so. I don't know why. <clears throat> I think that's part of why the relationships that I have had have been so precious to me. It's like a contrast to the typical experience. I always struggled to be someone for whom other people were able to be close to. It's a very odd statement, I guess, but it's actually pretty true. I don't, I don't think you could get anyone to testify to that fact that you can take my word for it or not, you know. that actually strikes me as pretty pertinent to this little enterprise is that although it's not like a banner mission statement that loneliness that kind of like alienation I think of it as like Sylvia Plath's bell jar, you know, but in reverse, like you're outside the bell jar and someone's in it. And there's a, maybe get it, you need to, but I felt that a lot in my life. It's like a primal ingredient of my, um, If you ever had the experience of being me, you know, that would be like a flavor, an existential flavor, an overtone, a note that with which you would be very familiar. Okay. So because of that, I um I can tell when I'm making these things. Not an endeavor to be someone that would not cause that effect in someone else. You know what I mean? Don't ask me why. It's like one of those. Um, well, you could ask me why, but I wouldn't be able to answer you. Really, at least not right now. It's just one of those things that um, those strange drives that make us human that you think um, 
maybe aren't a part of your life, you know, but they are. I bet they are. And I'm not saying the same ones, but like we all have our own different existential flavors that we like to... I, I, I'd like to think that we exchange them and share them and make new concoctions together. Whether we realize it or not, whether it's um, <clears throat> conscious or not, whether it's, well, fruitful or not. So, it's just one of mine, you know, the whole loneliness at a, a distance, and then, like, trying to find an antidote to that. Maybe just trying to understand it, you know, and then whatever it takes to understand that, whatever comes out of it, presenting that into something like this. All right. Well, unless you want to watch me eat another box of sushi, I guess that would be it for the day. I feel better about this now. I really didn't want to turn this on, but now that we did that, it's not so bad. It's good to see you.